Hello, hello, welcome. In this mini med lesson video, I would like to show you how to do subcuticular suturing in an interrupted fashion. Oftentimes we might do subcuticular suturing in a running suture, starting at one end and going in almost an S-shaped pattern to the other end. And I have other videos that cover that, so check that out. But in this video, I want to show how you can do subcuticular suturing in an interrupted fashion, similar to simple interrupted suturing, but buried. But please take a minute to hit like on this video, subscribe, follow along so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. Okay, for this one, I'm going to use this small, uh, rather superficial incision here on this, this skin pad, just to orient you to some of the anatomy of the skin real quick. Uh, notice we've got a more superficial layer, which is our epidermis. And then deep to that is a, a little bit larger or a little thicker dermis. Those two layers make the primary skin layer epidermis and dermis. And then deep to that, this yellowish tissue is the subcutaneous fat. Okay. And so in this, uh, su using this suturing technique, we're really going to be uh, focusing our suture in the subcutaneous fat coming through the dermis without piercing the epidermis and using the dermis as the stronger, uh, more, more uh, tough tissue that we're suturing. The dermis is a lot stronger than the subcutaneous fat below it. And so we're really suturing the dermis. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a misnomer to say that we are suturing uh, in a subcuticular fashion because in reality, the dermis is part of the cutis, but uh, that's the way that this has been historically named. So subcuticular suturing. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos on subcuticular suturing, there's a running version where you can start at one end and kind of do an S-shaped motion back and forth. If you haven't seen those videos for the running subcuticular, uh, feel free to check that out. I have a couple of them. One demonstrates the Aberdeen knot and one more of a, a traditional knot. Notice that I'm, I'm doing this lying flat here and that the skin edges are fairly well approximated. That is important because if you are going to be doing any subcuticular suturing, whether it's running or interrupted like we're going to do today, uh, it's important that you are not suturing skin that is gaping and has a lot of tension. Okay, We don't use subcuticular suturing in areas that have a lot of tension or pressure or a lot of movement. So you wouldn't want to do this kind of a technique over things like over the elbow or the wrist or anywhere in the hand or knees or on the foot. Okay, this is meant to be done in an area where there's not a lot of tension and you're trying to minimize scarring because your suturing is all going to be buried and dissolvable suture with steri strips over the top to reinforce it when you're done. So once we're done here, we would place steri strips over the top, glued down with mastosol on either side uh, to give it further reinforcement. But one of the hopes with subcuticular suturing is to minimize scarring. So when I've used this uh, method in the past, it's oftentimes on the face to close a like a, a laceration on the on the forehead or something like that. Uh, sometimes closing after something like a temporal artery biopsy uh, or closing the, the neck after a carotid end arterectomy or a, a, a cervical, like an anterior cervical discectomy infusion will close the skin in a subcuticular fashion, oftentimes with steri strips over the, over the top. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. So I'm going to be using, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, some Vicryl. Vicryl is an absorbable suture. Um, generally, I'll use something like a 5-0 or a 4-0 Vicryl. Um, this is a 4-0. Um, uh, Monocryl is another dissolvable suture that is commonly used for subcuticular suturing. All right, my needle's a little big uh, for this today, but uh, it's what I have. So uh, now... The idea with this interrupted subcuticular suturing is that it is very similar to our simple interrupted skin level closure, except we're going to do it upside down. Okay, so if you remember from our skin level closure or a simple interrupted, we're going to start superficially and go deep, right? And then go through the skin. The idea and then our knot would end up being on top because we started superficially and went deep. With subcuticular interrupted suturing, we're going to do the exact opposite of that, where we're going to start deep and go superficial, and then on the other side, go superficial to deep. And the idea is then when you tie your knot, your knot will be deep. So this is basically a simple interrupted suture, except inverted and buried. 
Okay, so with your pickups, you're going to go ahead and grab a hold of the skin so that you can see the subcutaneous fat and the dermis. And we're going to start down in the subcutaneous fat. We're going to move through that tissue and then pop up into the dermis, just superficial, excuse me, just deep to the epidermis. See how I have come, my needle has come up through uh, the dermis, but did not pierce the epidermis. Okay, and you want to make sure that you didn't exit out here on accident and create what we call a buttonhole. So I'm going to release and then I'm going to pull that the rest of the way through and then I'm going to pull my tail a little bit so it's not uh, too long to pull through later. And then I'm going to load my needle in this fashion, kind of a backhanded if you will, so that I can now go deep to, excuse me, superficial to deep. And you want to do this exactly across, uh, straight across from where you uh, went through first so that when the needle, when you tie your knot, it is going to be pulling straight across the, the incision instead of at an angle. All right. And so let me pull that out of the way. We're going to grab a hold with my pickups here and I'm going to now enter. We're going to go on this side, superficial to deep. So entering the dermis, just deep to the epidermis and then down into the subcutaneous fat like this. Now, really important with this pass, you want to make sure that how uh, deep you are in the dermis and how deep you are in the subcutaneous fat is exactly how it was on the other side. Your depths should be the same because then when you tie your knot, it's going to pull uh, symmetrically and it won't cause one side of the incision to pull up uh, above the other. So, uh, and then another important part of this is you want your ends, your tails, to be on the same side of the loop. Notice how I have my, my tail here that I'm going to use to tie, and then the other tail that's still attached to my needle. And as I pull this through, I'm going to open it up so you can see it there. As I pull this through, you can see that I've got my loop and my tails are on the same side. If your tails are not on the same side and you tie this, it will lock that knot uh, in a super, it'll be above. It, your knot will be on top of the loop in a superficial area and will also cause there to be a gap between the layers of the dermis. Okay, so make sure your tails are on both sides, uh, the both tails are on the same side of that loop. And then as we tie this, we're going to just uh, tie it using an instrument tie just like we do with a lot of our skin level closures, okay? And so, but I want to make sure that, uh, that my loops are just like that. My tails are free and not twisted around each other before I get started. If you are not uh, feeling fully comfortable and skilled in your instrument tie, please uh, practice that. And you can check out some of my instrument tie videos to uh, develop that skill if you'd like. Now, I'm going to start here in the middle and I'm going to go around and just quickly instrument tie this. So, um, as I pull this across, I want to make sure, I don't wanna be pulling uh, perpendicular to the skin edges like this. It can cause a little bit of microscopic damage to those skin edges. So instead, pull with the length of this and give it a little bit of tightness there. Not too tight, there's not a lot of pressure here, right? And then we're going to go ahead and just simply instrument tie this. Again, check out my other videos if you need help with learning the instrument tie. And you really don't need to do too many knot, uh, throws. And in reality, you probably don't want to do about more than four because that will cause your knot to be too big. And there shouldn't be a lot of pressure here, so four is going to be plenty. Now, as you finish that instrument tie, let me see if I can open this up a bit so you can see. My knot is deep. Okay, my knot is deep under the dermis. It should be down underneath the dermis in the subcutaneous fat. So I want to pull this up a little bit, pull uh, up with my uh, left hand and then with my scissor, I wanna get down as close as I can to the knot. And then without cutting the knot, I wanna rotate the scissor a little bit and cut that. And what that's going to do is allow for that knot to, and massage it a little bit, the knot will then drop down underneath the dermis. And let me open this up so you can hopefully see it a little bit. Now that we've done a decent job here, it's hard to see exactly what we've got. But what it's done is it's pulled the dermis together and the knot is now deep. And so notice, it's, I can't pull it open as much, but on the table here lying flat, it's nice and flat. It's just now well approximated in that spot. 
And so as I do, and that is a one suture, one interrupted suture, and I would do another one above and maybe two or three below here to finish this off. And then again, stereo strips over the top. So let me do that one more time for you down here. Again, I'd probably put about five of those sutures or five or so in this length of, a, of an incision before I would put stereo strips over the top. But let me do one more so you can see that again. So down here below, let me go ahead and open this up, grabbing it with my forcep. I'm going to start deep, go superficial, and we want to exit in the dermis just like that, deep to the epidermis. And I'm going to let go, grab with my needle driver and reload, just like that. See how you can do it in one quick movement. And then across on the other side, we want to go superficial to deep on this side. So I'm going to enter the dermis and then go deep into the subcutaneous tissue, keeping my passes through the tissue at the same depth on either side. And I'm going to now pull this through the rest of the way making sure that my tails are on the same side of the loop. Shorten that down a little bit. There you go, so both tails on the same side of the loop. Pull that a little tighter. And I'm going to go ahead now and instrument tie this. So let's make sure that we're not all twisted up before we tie this. We're a little twisted, so get it untwisted first. And then we're going to go ahead and instrument tie. We can get some decent pressure, but not too much. Now, this type of a suturing technique can often uh, also be done. I forgot to mention earlier, another place that we oftentimes might use this is like in the, the operating room after with laparoscopic surgeries, laparoscopic uh, surgeries using trocar uh, areas where the where the trocar passes through the the abdomen uh, the abdominal wall and down into the into the gut when we close those oftentimes that's just an an incision that's only about a centimeter or so and throwing one subcuticular interrupted suture like this and then dermabond over the top is a, a common way to close those trocar uh, uh, incisions but uh, there you go. So there was a second one. And notice I would, I'd would probably throw in uh, one here, one here between the two, and then one above. And so about five. And then I would do mastocell glue on the skin on either side of this, place stereo strips over the top, and a nice bandage over the top of it to finish it off. So that is your subcuticular interrupted suture technique. All right, and there you have it. I hope you found this video useful and helpful and that you can use it again and again as you practice this suturing technique. Please also check out my other videos, and if you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks.